actually before that I was reading this guy, uh, Mangaliso Robert Sabuque, mm -hmm. which I, you know, I realized that, you know, I'm not that bright, you know what I'm saying? Cause, but I, his archives are right here. They're, they're like right over there. It's Brother Sabuque. Anyway, uh, since I've been reading him, there's a thing that he that he wrote. And he says, uh, I wish to make it clear again that we are anti-nobody. We are pro-Africa. We breathe. We dream. We live Africa. Because Africa and humanity are inseparable. That's heavy, man. He said, it is only by doing the same that the minorities in this land, uh, European, colored, Indian, can secure mental and spiritual freedom. On the liberation of the African depends uh, on the liberation of the whole world. In other words, if you liberate Africa, you liberate the entire planet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the future of the world lies with the oppressed and the Africans. Wow. But they say, he's saying, the Africans are the most oppressed and they're on the earth, therefore, it's like, it's like the meek shall inherit the earth, I guess, kind of thing. Uh, uh, not only in the continent of Africa, but in America and the West Indies, too. Now, I'm going like, hey, he's talking to me, you know. <laughs> now, now, the thing is, but here's the thing, after reading that, I got to thinking, you know, I got to thinking a bunch of things, you know. And um, I don't want to go with all the stuff that I was thinking, but I came up with some some some, some points for me for me thinking. Because you know you read, you think, you might write, you know. So I'm I read, I was thinking, I, I got to write, but before I wrote, I had to, to be thinking. I said, and I wrote down this like a couple of things. Well, one, two, three. Well, here it is. I am a humanist, informed by an Africa. African mentality. I gotta say that one again. I sort of like that because it's kind of you know, people get tripped up on that. Mm -hmm. I am a humanist, informed by an Africa, African mentality. That's like I did the modern words. I'm doubling down. You know what I'm saying? I'm doubling down on that. Okay. Mm -hmm. I dream in African. I step into my dreams. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. I like that one too. I step to the steps of an African continuum of inhumanity. I step into a step of having to inhumanity. I step in, I should be saying I step into humanity. That's just a thought, you know what I mean? So now I'm thinking, I'm saying, wait a second, there's a poem here. Hmm. So now I gotta turn my thoughts into a poem. So, 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 so I did, of course I've been doing Consabas lately. Well, you know, I'm just gonna do that for him, you know, because, uh, you know, I mean, in fact, I wrote Eugene Redmond, the guy that, that invented the Consabas, you know, and I told him, hey, happy Father's Day, I told him happy Father's Day, and blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so I wrote a Consaba, and the title is Consaba for the African Me. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah, I like that one. Consaba for the African Me. Here it goes. As you know, Kusaba is a seven line poem, seven words to a line, no more than seven letters per word, except for proper names. Here we go. Kusaba for the African me. Follow no one, you African of space, you human full of love and grace, you who dreams in full color African. Your human face will never distort. Your history before the colony of forts. Step to the steps beyond those before. Allow only humans to grace your shores. By the poet. Mm -hmm. 
So that's that's it, man. That's about well, that's like well, let's call it the first draft because you know everybody thinks you know a lot of poets. You know they think that what they're supposed to do is just whatever they write down. That's it. But you know that, that's you get the inspiration. Then you got to do the work. So let's call it the first draft. I might stay there. I don't know what's, what's what's going on with that. But also, I'm just thinking about this humanity thing because I mean, the, you know, uh, uh, Brother Sabuque. You know, they, they live, well, he called himself a Pan-Africanist. And there's a lot of nationalists going on. And all kinds of is happening. And I'm going like, yeah, but as soon as you label something, then, then somebody else can make you a, a, a boogeyman. You know what I mean? You know, I can speak for this. No, maybe I can't speak for the state. But, you know, we had that whole thing in the 50s with the communist thing, and it lasted through the 60s, 70s, 80s. <laughs> you know, and I, you know, you, you, you know then somebody... They call you a, if they call you a, a Marxist or a Leninist or worse a Stalinist or you know I don't know they call you a bunch of things you know and I'm going like man but reading about the book with it I'm going like wait a second see I think of myself as a universalist I've traveled a lot on the planet but now I'm thinking like what am I before I'm a before I am a universalist. You know, before I'm a, an American, you know, or an African, I'm really a humanist. So now I'm going back to my other thought about, you know, everybody wants to, I mean, even him, I've read him, they want the United States of Africa. I think we talked about this before, or United Nations of Africa. And I'm going like, hey, we should have United Cultures of Africa. And the only way, and, and, and this is a, well, to be on the continent, right, as a culture, the only, uh, the, the number one thing is you have to be human. If you're not doing a human thing, uh, then you don't need to be on this continent. You, mm -hmm. you gotta go someplace else. You, 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 you can be in a culture group, but if you, in, even in that culture group, if you're not being human, if you're not doing human things, if you're doing inhuman things, against human things, well, the, 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 that, that culture is not an African culture. So you need to, you know, you know, take the ship or the boat or plane, whatever you got to take and get out of the way because you want to pull that inhuman thing, then you got to be someplace else. Because, like Brother Spook was saying, you know, if we hold on to our humanity, if you know what I'm saying, so I, I so 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 that's what's getting me to thinking. Above all else, you got to be human. If you're not being human, if you're being greedy, whatever you're being. Then, then you can't hang. I mean, well, that's the way I look at it. I could be, I mean, I could be wrong because you know I'm just an audio dramatist, you know. And then you know, well, anyway, you you understand what I'm saying, and I'm, I'm sure sure there's some. This is out there in the air now, you know. The humans are being human. The inhuman people we got not marginalized. We got to say, well, you got to be inhuman someplace else. To be on this planet, you got to be human, so you got to go someplace else. They're they making spaceships, <laughs> you can go someplace else. <laughs> colonize, colonize someplace else with your inhumanity. <laughs> that's my thing. Well, that's all I'm saying, because, you know, I'm just, well, this is just one of those dispatches, you know, from the arts director and emeritus. That would be me, T, from the Pattersons taking the train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect.